Okay, good morning. Uh, see, uh, we have been doing in our course, uh, especially uh, in this lateral dynamics, uh, almost uh, at the end of um, this module, uh, uh, the suspension effect on lateral dynamics, right? So the suspension primarily uh, in a vehicle is an important system that uh, uh, discretize the entire vehicle masses, sprung mass and unsprung mass. So that uh, act in between these sprung mass and unsprung mass. And uh, the primary objective work of the suspension is not only to isolate the vibration uh, that enters into the vehicle. We are going to uh, study that in more detail in the next part of our module. Uh, vertical dynamics, the vehicle handling aspects also very important. That's what we have been understanding in previous lectures. The role of vehicle. There is uh, the limiting uh, value of lateral acceleration for a vehicle beyond which uh, there can be an unstable state of your vehicle during hard cornering. That's what is called the rollover stability. So there's rollover stability. Uh, uh, this lateral acceleration threshold value is uh, dictated by the role of axle as well as the role of sprung mass. That means the role of unsprung mass and role of sprung mass both, both are being uh, considered uh, in that. So that's what we have uh, uh, seen as far as stability point of view in the suspension. And for directional response, the tendencies of the vehicle is concerned. The role of your vehicle do contribute uh, to an understeer uh, gradient. And that is what we have looked at and we have derived uh, the expression uh, for the additional term that goes into uh, uh, getting an understeer uh, gradient for a vehicle. So the expression, if you look at carefully, uh, you see that expression uh, has got to change in the uh, normal load uh, in the uh, vehicle and uh, cornering um, stiffness values of the tires. Uh, there is no explicit appearance of roll angle or roll rate uh, in that expression, correct? So um, today we are going to look at uh, this role of your vehicle body, not only going to contribute to the understeer gradient in terms of change in normal load because of lateral load transfer that takes place during cornering. Also, it is going to give an influence on change in camber and there is another aspect of phenomena called the roll steer effect. So you know what do you mean by camber angle? So camber is an inclination of the wheel plane to the uh, vertical from the body of the, uh, you can say from the body of the vehicle. So you have a body, uh, so vertical uh, from the ground. So whatever is the wheel plane inclination uh, that is provided uh, to the uh, body of the vehicle is what is called the camber angle. And this camber angle do have an influence uh, on a cornering force that is developed because of there is camber thrust, there is camber due to camber stiffness of the tire. So this camber thrust, uh, uh, though it is uh, compared to that of the lateral force that is developed by uh, the slip angle, uh, if you look at, it is very, very uh, small value. For example, if we take bias tires, uh, you see that would be uh, maybe uh, uh, one fifth uh, uh, or uh, uh, one by uh, maybe uh, you can say in other ways, uh, whatever the uh, angle required to produce an equivalent uh, lateral force produced by a slip angle, one degree slip angle would be camber of five to uh, uh, five to six degrees camber angle would produce it. Means the one fifth of the uh, lateral force that can be developed by slip angle is what is developed by camber. But still, uh, you require the uh, effect of camber that has to be accounted uh, in the uh, uh, in our study because those all are going to act as an instantaneous effect, uh, uh, instantaneous effect called a uh, uh, transient understeer gradient effect, <coughs> right? In case of radial tires, if you look at the camber stiffness of the radial tire, generally is smaller than that of uh, the camber uh, uh, stiffness. What is available for a bias ply tire? So if that would be further uh, reducing the camber thrust value that would be produced uh, on a radial tires. But however, as it is important that um, point of view of uh, what would be the change in 
uh, or the influence in understeer gradient, we cannot neglect this camber effect. So we will have to account that camber change and due to camber change, what would be the uh, change or what would be the influence on the understeer gradient that we have derived uh, in the previous lectures. So that we have to see. And uh, we also see that the role of uh, uh, why this camber change comes, it is uh, by design camber provided on your vehicle. That's called the body camber. Uh, wheel plane inclination to the body is what is body camber. But as the vehicle roll, the sprung mass roll with respect to the roll center, you see that uh, there would be an additional camber effect on the uh, wheel. And this change in camber effect would uh, be considered and that is because of vehicle roll and uh, of course some uh, other geometrical aspects of your suspension system and your uh, tread or track of your vehicle. So these are all uh, something that we have to understand uh, through the camber change for understeer gradient. And uh, there is also another uh, effect uh, called uh, steering effect on wheels because of the roll of your vehicle. So the sprung mass roll would cause there is a steering effect in the wheel and that is what is called a roll steer effect. So there is roll steer coefficient that we have to be defining and that would also be accounted uh, for a case of uh, the influence on understeer gradient. So these are the two aspects uh, now in this lecture we will see if time permits we will continue looking at what would be the effect because of uh, um, there are something called bushes uh, provided in a suspension system for an NVH purpose um, for NVH purpose isolation of vibration and isolation of noise that entered the vehicle uh, the linkages uh, do have bushes these bushes would have some compliance in lateral direction and that would create some lateral force and um, that would also have an influence on an understeer uh, gradient effect. So that we have to look at and you also see that uh, you know something that we have learned what is called a self-aligning torque. So self-aligning torque is inevitable whenever wheels are steered. When wheels are steered you see there are lateral force developed you know that lateral force uh, uh, resulted in the contact patch is just behind the uh, uh, center of contact patch. Uh, at a distance called pneumatic trail. So that would always uh, resist the steering uh, effect of your uh, steering effect of your uh, um, wheel and uh, would favor always for an understeer uh, uh, gradient. So we have to look at uh, what would be the term that is for uh, to account self aligning torque. <coughs> and uh, uh, another uh, two important aspects that we will be studying in our uh, understeer uh, trans understeer gradient effect is that uh, one is a steering system. So if you look at the steering system, we have an important geometrical angle uh, called uh, kingpin inclination angle and caster angle. So these angles uh, do have an influence on an understeer gradient. So that we have to look at and uh, these all effects uh, we consider uh, in a bicycle model with the steady state motion in a hot cornering. That means you do not change the tractive force, driving force or braking during cornering and we have been looking at it. When you have your rigid vehicle without considering suspension, that's quite enough model called bicycle model, uh, which, on, which only accounts uh, tire compliance where we have considered cornering stiffness of the tire constant. But uh, that we have eliminated that assumption with non-linear tire model considering uh, the cornering stiffness is function of normal load and we consider quadratic polynomial uh, load uh, variation and uh, um, we are able to account what would be the influence by lateral load transfer on the uh, understeer gradient and that is primarily uh, due to the role of the uh, sprung mass. So these are all something that we have seen and uh, at the end uh, we have to see um, the other uh, effects that we have considered so far and we are going to see today's class all are called an instantaneous effect. They are not going to be always permanent. When you go with the state motion, there won't be any change in camber. There won't be any uh, roll steer effect in the uh, wheels. Uh, there won't be uh, uh, no uh, self aligning torque. So this all comes uh, uh, once you give a steering and a hard cornering at that instant it is all appearing. So, um, the other terms, whatever that we uh, derive for understeer gradient are called uh, um, transient understeer gradient effects. 
the real uh, uh, motion which is called uh, transient uh, motion influence is whenever you uh, do accelerate or brake during cornering you would have your uh, vehicle undergo from uh, change from its steady state motion at that time also there will be an influence on understeer gradient we need to understand that also so when you have these many other uh, factors other than simple tire compliance with the constant uh, uh, cornering stiffness value uh, you would almost able to uh, bring in the whole effect of the vehicle uh, uh, directional responses in our study so with that background note let us look at what all uh, the additional uh, effects that we have discussed now one by one in our lecture so let me share my active inspire board <clears throat> So this is lecture number forty, and today's date is nineteenth May twenty twenty one. Let us look at now influence on. So what is that we are looking at is influence on understeer gradient. So this understeer gradient uh, for a steady state motion is described by the requirement of steering angle uh, by uh, in decrease angle in decrease by this expression 57.3 L by R plus alpha F minus alpha R where alpha F alpha R are the slip angle at the front axle wheels and rear axle wheels respectively. L is wheel base, R is turning radius. And this is the requirement of steering angle under steady state motion. Steady state corner right? that we know. And uh, uh, now today's class, uh, let us first understand. Uh, we I'll call this as the third effect called the camber change effect. Amber change effect, right? So you know, camber angle is defined by a notation gamma, and uh, let's look at uh, uh, see how this camber is defined. As uh, we know that it is an inclination of the wheel plane from the body is what is camber, and uh, mm, uh, this camber is a design requirement in order to have uh, uh, kingpin offset and in order to have uh, pressure on the uh, Mm, uh, uh, wheels to hold it to hold the wheels on the half and also the important uh, effect of camber angle is that it may cause the tire wear right so you should have your uh, scrub radius uh, uh, should be minimum uh, in order to uh, avoid that right so this is all something that uh, from geometrical aspect you know that otherwise we'll discuss it later and now let's look at this camber means uh, uh, at no slip angle, at alpha equals zero, at slip angle zero, I look at what is this camber angle. So what do you mean by uh, slip angle zero? Slip angle zero means uh, it is uh, maybe when you do not give a steering input. Uh, when you go straight, there is no slip angle, there is no lateral force. So there is a design camber requirement and that camber would produce a camber thrust. So that camber <coughs> variation uh, uh, how do you look at this? There will be uh, uh, lateral force due to camber uh, angle variation, and that would uh, be uh, again nonlinear. And you define your camber thrust, camber thrust, uh, by uh, defining a camber stiffness. So this do f y by do gamma at gamma equal zero is what you get. Uh, uh, C gamma called camber stiffness. Camber stiffness, camber stiffness. Right. So now uh, you know this camber stiffness uh, into camber angle is what is cornering force. That is called the camber thrust. This is called the camber 
thrust or cornering force due to camber angle is given by this C gamma into gamma. So this is the definition of uh, camber thrust. Right? And this should happen when uh, in the direction of camber angle. If uh, this is my vertical, this is a vertical line. And my wheel plane is lean in this way. This angle is exaggerated. This angle is what is camber angle, and I would have my camber thrust would be in this direction, F by. So there is a stiffness called camber stiffness of uh, the tire at the zero slip angle, uh, defined um, by this uh, variation of FIS function of camber angle, and that would be uh, giving you this camber thrust angle. So this camber thrust, uh, camber angle can be this way or it can also be in the other way. Uh, then uh, accordingly this direction of F5 would be decided, right? So this is uh, the definition of camber and camber thrust. Now uh, let us look at, let us look at uh, how this uh, uh, going to influence on an understeer gradient. So for that, let me uh, just to show you the total camber that would take place during the roll of uh, the vehicle. So for that, let us look at now a vehicle uh, typical uh, schematic diagram that would represent two independent suspension in the uh, either in the front or the rear, uh, and uh, that is collapsed and it is taken uh, in the uh, wheel uh, in the vehicle uh, in the plane YZ plane along the CG location like that. If you take, let me draw now. Uh, this. So I have here a wheel, and this wheel is connected by the linkage to the vehicle body. Similarly, I have the other right hand side wheel. And this wheel also can back now in this direction. Right, so this is my wheel plane. This is my wheel plane of the tire. Now let's define my vehicle body orientation as this way. So let's define now uh, these uh, lines. One is this vertical line from the ground. This is vertical line. Again, uh, here a vertical line from the ground. This vertical line from the ground and these uh, other uh, these lines are the lines to, from the wheel plane. Wheel plane inclination to the vertical is what is total camber angle. But this camber uh, angle is because of the roll of our body. So roll of the body is uh, like this. So when uh, you take a uh, uh, left on and you have a right roll. So rightward side roll. So consider these wheels now I have drawn is on the road surface where there is a right turn uh, where there is a left turn left turn so if my vehicle turns left and the roll of the body would be on the right so let's uh, have that body roll appears uh, like this so i'm taking a schematic diagram this is my vehicle body So this is the roll like this. Now this roll is defined uh, here. This is my CG location, and you see there is a vertical line here through the CG, and you have a roll about something called a roll center that would take place somewhere here, and the roll of the body is given by this line. So this angle is roll. And the roll angle is phi, right? So if I bring this, uh, if I draw a line parallel to this, I would have here uh, there is a roll from the vertical that's due to uh, this. So I have here this line, and uh, here as well as this line. So these blue lines that you can uh, connect to the 
change in camber in the wheel due to roll. So these angles here now are the roll angle. So this is same as phi. This is same as phi. So now what is the role of uh, um, the camber provided in our wheel uh, is what is called uh, uh, camber angle with the wheel plane. Camber angle with the wheel plane. So how much is that is this? Uh, how do you get that is this? So this angle is what is gamma B. So there is camber now with the uh, body plane. So uh, this blue line, whatever that I draw would be same as that of uh, this body vertical line. You can say this line. So as body rolls from vertical by phi angle and already there is a design camber uh, that is given by gamma B and gamma B and both sides. So this is gamma B. So now what is my total camber from the ground uh, with respect to vertical is gamma G that is gamma B plus phi. This is my total camber. is my total camber angle during cornering during cornering right so as you know that uh, the variation in this variation in this camber angle is function of uh, the roll angle primarily i can define a term now called roll gradient uh, like a roll gradient, I can define a term called camber gradient. So camber gradient is function of roll of sprung mass. So I would define that as gamma do gamma by do phi. So with respect to roll of my vehicle body, see uh, this effect is uh, uh, going to influence the uh, there will be a lag of this camber change effect from the roll of the body because uh, as soon as um, the vehicle uh, rolls after a small delay there will be a, a, a influence of this camber right so uh, the variation is uh, importantly function of uh, function of uh, the roll angle called this term is called roll not roll uh, camber gradient camber gradient it's called the camber gradient and which is function of not only roll angle as well as the suspension geometry and track width so track width comma suspension geometry suspension geometry so right so now uh, let us come back to uh, realize uh, how do you now get our uh, understeer gradient uh, influence so for that let's consider now what would be my total uh, cornering force fy during hard cornering accounting my uh, other aspects other aspects means the tire cornering stiffness or slip angle so the cornering force developed at the contact patch is now not only not only uh, not only produced by c alpha times alpha that comes from corner, uh, tire cornering stiffness also from uh, a camber also from camber so you see here minus sign y so this is now taking a turn towards left and roll is on rightward side so the turn is in this side so i would have my lateral force developed uh, in this direction by slip angle that is uh, fy alpha fy alpha whereas uh, the camber is on the other side so i would have my camber thrust in this direction and that is of smaller value fy gamma fy gamma so the net uh, fy would be the difference in this so that is what i do take now so from this what is that i am going to do is how do i get my understeer gradient effect is so looking at this equation written here let's call this is our governing equation of steady state motion given by the requirement of steering angle so slip angles are there present in that so i should get an expression of slip angle so that i can get it clearly from here 
So that would be C alpha into alpha. That's going to be Fy plus C gamma into gamma. So what does Fy here in steady state motion? In steady state motion, Fy is given by W u squared by Rg. So that I can substitute uh, in this uh, expression. So let's call uh, this is my equation one and this is my equation two. Uh, third equation is uh, this, my third equation. So that now I can write uh, the same. Uh, what is for FIF? I know now if this is total print axel, if I have FIF would be, uh, uh, what is it? It's W B by L uh, U squared by RG. So that's nothing but W F U squared by RG. Uh, FYR can be written as W A by L, where A and B are the uh, ratios of distance. So A is distance of front axle from the CG location, B is uh, distance of rear axle from the CG location that you know already. So this is uh, L uh, into U squared by RG, and that's going to be WR U squared by RG, right? So this equation, let's call this set of this equation set as four. So now from this equation two, I can get uh, what is my slip angle. So slip angle alpha can be written as uh, Fy by C alpha plus C gamma by C alpha into gamma. So where Fy is, uh, this. so this expression is a generic expression of total slip angle, but uh, we cannot uh, have total slip angle. So this is per axle. If I look at front axle, then this alpha would be alpha f and correspondingly this would be f y f and f y f is what is uh, uh, given by this expression. So that is, let me first put this as f y f by c alpha f plus c gamma f by c alpha f into gamma. And uh, similarly, I can write what is the expression for slip angle that is at the rear Fy R by C alpha R plus C gamma R by C alpha R into gamma. So this equation set let's call as equation five. Now, uh, now I can bring in uh, this whatever that we know. So this gamma is what is uh, camber angle and that is going to be obtained by camber gradient times the roll angle. That's where the, uh, the camber change is a function of cam roll, body roll that we have seen is evident. So it would be defined by do gamma by do rho, what is called roll, uh, sorry, camber gradient. Uh, camber gradient is the derivative of camber angle as function of with reference to roll angle multiplied by uh, roll you get this camber angle right so if this is so i can get from this uh, this equation modify also you know also you know that uh, this roll body roll is function of what is lateral acceleration lateral acceleration is a necessary uh, requirement for cornering so that would be uh, obtained by uh, roll rate, what we have defined as roll rate as function of lateral acceleration, right, into lateral acceleration. So these expressions that you know, you can plug in them into this. So my gamma is going to be do gamma by do phi into do phi by do a y into a y. So this is uh, my equation six. So where you know that uh, this term is called camber gradient. And this term is what is called roll rate. Roll rate, right? So now uh, I need to substitute this into this into uh, equation 5. So put this in 5 and I get my slip angles and that equation would be now alpha f, the slip angle at the front axle now 
uh, is uh, also accounting the change in camber would be w f by c alpha f into a y into a y plus see so understand that how does it come right because the f i f is what f i s is w f into u squared by r g so w f is uh, this into a y u squared by r g is what is a y so by c alpha which is there already in equation number five and denominator so plus gamma this i have to substitute that's going to be uh, see what was there in this c alpha c gamma f by c alpha f which is there already uh, in equation five equation five and i should substitute the gamma now so that gamma is going to be uh, from this so that's going to be do gamma f in the front axle due to camber change in front axle wheels by do phi in do phi by do a y into a y and similarly i can write for uh, the slip angle now at the rear axle wheels accounting the camber change as well would be w r by c alpha r into a y plus c gamma r by c alpha r into do gamma r by do phi to do phi by do a y into a y so let's call this set of equation as seven and now i have to put this uh, expression uh, of alpha f and alpha r in equation one put in equation one what is that equation del governing equation of steady state motion it's 57 point 3 l by r plus alpha f minus alpha r so in this if i substitute this expression would change into this way so my delta is going to be 57.3 l by r plus substituting this and taking a y term out and i would have these terms the w f by c alpha f minus w r by c alpha r from the first term plus on the second term i have uh, in this uh, what is that i am taking out uh, ay i take out and uh, roll rate also let me take it out so i would have now the c all gamma f c gamma f by c alpha f what is c gamma f camber stiffness uh, uh, what is c alpha f it is uh, um, cornering stiffness due to slip angle or it is the cornering stiffness of the tire right and uh, do gamma f by do phi minus c gamma r by c alpha r do gamma r by do phi take this uh, uh, do phi by do a y which is roll rate out into a y into a y so this a y is common for this term as well as for this term and this term is due to tire compliance that's term one already we have seen and this term is now due to this third term and that would be offered by camber so understeer uh, gradient effect due to the camber change is now uh, uh, obtained by this expression getting added with what we have already got it uh, considering in our bicycle model so here you may ask uh, uh, there is uh, again uh, in this derivation there is no explicit appearance of uh, the terms that comes into uh, uh, this what is that is due to uh, lateral load transfer that we have already expressed so this is now uh, uh, considering camber change alone and body roll uh, uh, is taken into uh, account but uh, explicit uh, see the last class whatever we have done uh, is uh, not considering camber angle now we consider the camber angle and take uh, the effect of roll uh, through uh, the uh, um, camber gradient that's all 
That is why you get this term. And here you should be remember uh, very well that uh, what is uh, this expression here? Do phi by do a y is what is called the roll rate. Roll rate. And uh, uh, and uh, you have seen that it is given by roll rate, and this is given by the expression W H one by K phi K phi F plus K phi R minus W H one. So this is roll rate. So roll angle would be uh, this into A Y. We multiply that is your roll angle. So this is what is an additional term due to camber change. Now let us look at what is the roll steer effect. What is roll steer effect? Fourth one, uh, roll steer. The term itself we see roll is due to body roll and steer is the steer effect in the wheels. Right. So when a vehicle rolls uh, in the car during cornering, there will be an uh, uh, expected um, uh, steer effect in the wheels. That's due to suspension kinematics. Due to suspension kinematics. What do you mean by kinematics? We do not account any uh, cause of the motion of the linkages in the suspension. Rather, uh, we look at the motion parameters of the suspension. That means what are the various positions that linkage uh, 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 connection points moves uh, or at what rate it moves, velocity of them or acceleration of them. So these kinematics of your suspension do have an influence on uh, the connection point of your uh, uh, suspension with the hub of your wheel. So uh, accordingly, there would be a steering effect in your uh, uh, wheels. And that is what is called roll steer. So it is uh, the roll steer effect either in the first front axle wheels or the rear axle wheels with respect to sprung mass roll. With respect to sprung mass is due to the rolling motion of the sprung mass. So this effect to account let us define now uh, a coefficient called the roll steer coefficient roll steer coefficient and that's given by a letter epsilon roll steer coefficient and um, uh, you see this roll steer coefficient can be uh, should be defined for front axle as well as for a rear axle and it would be for a front axle and that is positive right so how do i define this uh, roll steer coefficient this epsilon is uh, again influenced by the roll so like you have a camber gradient you would define uh, this roll steer uh, coefficient by uh, uh, this so the roll steer there is a steering that comes so that would be very small so do delta by do phi due to roll so this into of course roll rate do phi by do a y into a y. So this here, this delta is not, see you did understand this delta is not a given steering input. This delta is what is the steer motion of wheel due to uh, sprung mass roll. That is, and that is going to be function of uh, roll. So you just take its derivative do delta by do phi and into phi. So the phi is what is given by do phi by do ay into ay. So this is what is the angle phi. So I define this. So this uh, uh, value would be positive. This epsilon value will be positive when, when this wheel steer to the right in the right hand row. Correct? This is positive when the wheels steers wheel steers will steer to the right right in a right hand roll so i may ask you a question now 
So uh, wheel steer to the right during right hand hold me uh, right hand road means right hand road means what uh, the turning is towards left means the vehicle turn is to the left. That is obvious, right? So when a vehicle takes the left turn, the roll of your sprung mass is towards right, and the wheel steers also about right. Then this uh, roll steer coefficient, what we define, is positive value. And this is positive value referred to understeer effect. This refers to an understeer effect. Understeer effect. Right? So can this be negative? Obviously, this can also be negative. So that would be negative when it is uh, referring to an oversteer effect. Effect. So what do you mean by that? Uh, that means vehicle takes a turn uh, towards left. Uh, here this is a wheel steer towards left. Wheel steers to the left uh, in a right hand uh, road. That's what is the negative value referred to and that effect would be oversteer effect oversteer effect so a positive roll steer coefficient cause causes the wheels to steer to the right in a right hand road uh, right hand road so see uh, conversely uh, if you look at the positive roll steer on the rear axle would become what if i have if this is so you see now in the uh, top view this vehicle My front axle V. I take left turn, and uh, these are the rear axle wheels. These are the rear axle wheels, right? So now, <coughs> somewhere this is easy location. So um, here, the steer effect is in this way. This is delta here because of roll steer in the front axle. Uh, when this takes a turn and this del this this angle is what is delta now right this angle is delta and this delta is not given through the steering wheel this delta is what is the roll steer that would cause due to roll of your vehicle body right so that is delta here uh, and uh, if the same thing happens here as well as in the rear side also what would happen these two uh, if we take a left turn and your front uh, axle wheels which are uh, your steering wheels uh, steer wheels connected right front wheel uh, steering then uh, you, you, your steering goes in this way that means what you have to further um, increase your steering that is uh, attempting to create an understeer effect so the same understeer effect in the rear axle also if you feel what would happen if the rear axle uh, wheels are turns like that that would push the forward of your vehicle into the turn into the turn that is why uh, you see that would be that would be uh, oversteer effect. So the positive value, the positive value of uh, this coefficient in front axle, <coughs> front axle will create an understeer effect. If the same is on the if the same is on the rear axle, that would create an oversteer effect. That would create an oversteer effect, right? That is why here I just have put this epsilon as uh, minus. So not, uh, don't put as minus. So this value is positive, uh, you consider, and uh, you don't call this as minus. Uh, right? So don't put this as minus. Take only the definition of this, and it's positive value. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, happened in front axle that creates an understeer effect. And if this happens in the rear axle, that creates an oversteer effect. This is as far as um, um, the um, independent suspension is concerned. Suppose you have a solid axle suspension. To understand this oversteer effect, let's consider now. Uh, most of the time, you see the rear axle uh, uh, wheels are solid axle wheels. Uh, uh, you see that um, your oversteer effect can be best understood by uh, this diagram. Uh, this diagram. What is that diagram is? Uh, it is in a suspension equivalence to a trailing arm uh, arrangement. So I have my wheel. 
where this is the engine center, uh, the uh, hub, and uh, um, the vehicle body frame or chassis is uh, over here. It passes through that, and uh, you consider now this is now pivoted by uh, supported by a trailing arm. So this is what is called a trailing arm. And this angle here, let's call this angle as beta. So now this is uh, roll steer with the solid axle suspension. So if I consider this to be a rear axle, rear axle, and uh, if you look at the rear axle, both the wheels, uh, uh, let us look at now, uh, that would be appearing like this. So this is my frame. This is my frame or uh, chassis, right? So I have both uh, wheels here. Uh, there is a wheel here, and there is another wheel here, right? There is another wheel here. So these wheel now on the ground uh, would be uh, having their trailing arm. It's at an angle beta when there is no turn. There is no turn here. This is the definition of trailing arm. Uh, and uh, um, in the rear axle, when you look at now, uh, what will happen to this angle beta uh, defines the trailing arm inclination that would increase in this uh, uh, in this that would increase in this wheel. Right. So let me have an appropriate diagram. Right. That is connected here. So this angle would increase here, whereas that angle would be decreasing here. That angle would be decreasing here. This angle would be decreasing here. So this increase in this will pull this forward. So by the way, uh, what is the direction of turn? Is this is the direction of turn? This is the direction of turn. Uh, and uh, you see that uh, since this beta angle increases here, that means the trailing arm will be moving down here. Uh, uh, so I should also have this connected by the solid axle. So you see that this frame now is not horizontal. This frame is at an angle to the horizontal and that angle, that angle is what is the body roll. The chassis rolls uh, like that. So that makes this uh, on a, um, uh, on a uh, inner side. So this is the inner side. This is the outer side, right? So in an inner side, you see increase in beta. Outer side, you see decrease in beta because of the body roll. So I don't draw the vehicle body. Rather, I take an attachment of vehicle on a chassis uh, in a light trucks or a trucks if you look at. So you see this roll effect uh, creates this. So this change would make this wheel, uh, inner wheel, inner wheel to push forward, outer wheel to pull backward. So this effect of that would create a, a steer effect, uh, which is sense uh, when you take a left turn and the steer effect is to the right turn. So you have your positive roll steer coefficient there. But uh, since it happens on the rear axle, that would create an oversteer effect. So that's what you should understand. So when can you have uh, an understeer effect uh, uh, with this coefficient? For that, this trailing arm angle uh, variation is what is going to dictate. So if I have my wheel, if I have my wheel on a rear axle and I look at it and uh, I have here, uh, this is a hub, this is a hub and uh, there is a roll center of your vehicle body, this is just above here, this ground level, and this is your roll center. Roll center of your uh, uh, of this axle, roll center, right? Where is the lateral force, whatever we have seen that, the lateral force, whatever is developed here is transferred to the vehicle body, and that creates a lateral load transfer uh, necessarily for your roll motion, all you know that. So uh, now this trailing angle with respect to this roll center in the rear 
happens to be uh, now what we have discussed is in this orientation. Right? So that is why it's oversteer effect, and this is the effect that you see. Because it turns like that, and the rear wheel uh, turns in this way. This yaw motion makes that uh, 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 steer of your rear axle wheels uh, um, away from the turn. Uh, that would create, uh, that would be similar to that of this scenario here, whatever that I explained. Right? So that would create an oversteer effect. So this is the orientation. If I have this orientation not uh, having beta value zero, that, that is referring to neutral stair effect. If this orientation is uh, downward, this angle beta is now downward, then it is going to be an understeer effect. So I require to have an understeer effect uh, offered uh, from the rear axle as well, from this roll uh, steer coefficient. I should have my trailing arm orientation in this fashion. Then I would have the other way around. So this would uh, push this backward and this would pull this forward and the uh, turn uh, steer of my rear axle wheels is into the turn and that would assist my understeer. That vehicle would tendency would become an understeer. So uh, you have this. So now uh, how do I account the effect due to this uh, role? So that is K roll steer, understeer gradient value would be given by there is a coefficient at the front axle wheels and there is a coefficient at the rear axle wheel. And uh, this can be positive, both are positive. And um, uh, I substitute that the difference is going to cause whether it's going to be an understeer or oversteer condition like that. So this into do phi by do. A Y. Do phi by do A Y. So this is the term that I would get. Added to the uh, uh, understeer gradient. Any doubt in this? Do you have any doubt in this? If there is no doubt, then uh, let's look at two more effects. Uh, and the two more effects are. This is which one we consider is fourth effect. So let's call this as fifth effect. Uh, lateral force. Force. Compliance. Steer. Lateral force compliance steer. And then we'll also look at uh, the effect due to self aligning torque. And an effect due to suspension uh, steering system. System. This still the seven uh, items, whatever that we have seen, all are of steady state motion. And uh, finally, let's look at what would be the effect due to tractive force, change in variation or uh, variation in tractive force. In tractive force. So these are the things that is, that are left now. So I would take a class again on this uh, Friday, uh, 10 to 11 and complete this portion. And uh, next week uh, I would take every day morning. Uh, uh, we have this invigilation duty according to my um, timing of my invigilation duty. I would make myself free to call your, you for your uh, submission of your uh, J component. And we'll have a discussion on that to further improvise, right? So that is the uh, uh, instruction or note for J component is concerned. And um, uh, as far as your digital assignment is concerned, uh, you can work out and finish uh, uh, for uh, this effect of role uh, in your vehicle. So whatever uh, this expression that you are deriving, so you can uh, look at those uh, expressions and. Uh, uh, in your uh, add in your uh, digital assignment. If you are able to put the values and numerically able to calculate, fine. Otherwise, you uh, have your section in your uh, digital assignment stating that the effect uh, on uh, directional response due to understeer gradient can get influenced by the other design aspects uh, that comes from suspension, steering system, and so on. Uh, essentially, uh, in terms of effect, is uh, sprung mass roll effect during hard cornering 
and also like uh, suspension uh, optimization uh, for uh, rollover stability uh, is what in the last class we discussed we we'll try to understand that uh, also you can incorporate in case you are not able to plug in numerical values because of data is not clear uh, the values at least you should have a note of what you have understood in your digital assignment so this all uh, uh, what is there in your uh, uh, module 5 uh, that you are uh, able to see these four topics and i think one period is sufficient that i will complete on this friday uh and uh, that ends with the uh, module 5 and then module 6 uh, uh, we look at uh, vertical dynamics and module 7 is the topic for some of the aspects that we need to understand uh, experimental model analysis or transfer path analysis uh, so if time permits i would explain uh, maybe one period i'll summarize what are those things may not be there for your exam point of view but uh, your vertical dynamics uh, another four five lectures that i will be teaching you uh, that would be uh, essentially uh, for this uh, examination so maybe uh, if time permits i'll do otherwise i'll post the videos uh, uh, for the next week your classes are suspended but you can look at those uh, videos for vertical dynamics to learn so that when you come back on june uh, we would have our review of your j component and discussion on your projects that you have carried out so that's what in my mind at the moment uh, let us uh, try to uh, utilize the available time effectively right so i may post the video lectures for vertical dynamics uh, that you can uh, go through in the next week when the classes are not going to take place but the video lectures you can listen and uh, also parallelly your j component assessment and um, the last week uh, uh, of our june uh, month uh, i would have my schedule for uh, you to have your final presentation uh, for your j component right so this is that uh, uh, instruction with that note uh, let me stop today's lecture maybe from tomorrow onwards i'll call uh, the students groups for the discussion right Uh, tomorrow or friday i'll call uh, uh, maybe per day one or two groups two groups maximum or one group uh, it depends upon how much time the discussion uh, that's going to go on so um, uh, that would continue for the next week also so that again second round of discussion if necessary uh, uh, that would be uh, during june as far as your learning part is concerned of the vertical dynamics i will post my uh, videos on vertical dynamics lectures and you can listen to them so this is all what is that uh, uh, we are going to do in our forthcoming lectures so if you have any doubts you can ask uh, otherwise we will uh, end the lectures today right they have anything to ask any doubts hello sir clarification yeah yeah hello let me uh, stop recording hello sir